So let's start with Culture Eats Big Data for Breakfast by Markus Heimgärtner and Richard Hübner. So the floor is yours. Yeah, good evening. My name is Richard Hübner with the microphone. So um, thank you for coming. Thank you, um, Philip and Stefan, for inviting us and um, uh, coming a little bit from the non-technical side um, of uh, big data, so from the cultural side. And um, as long as um, we could start, then um, I would hand over to Markus, um, who makes the very beginning. OK, well, my name is um, Markus Heingartner. I'm, I'm the, the co-founder together with uh, Richard of Dignit. We are quite a young company. As uh, Richard mentioned, who is helping organizations prepare themselves for making use of digital technologies. Uh, first, we thought it's more about uh, looking for the right software, but then we found out that uh, it's often much more about preparing people, giving um, executives the right stories, so people really don't fear change, and don't fear being uh, probably um, substituted, but see that it's really a help for them, whatever kind of digital technology there is. And one of these big topics is, uh, is big data. Our point of view uh, to big data, or to data for that matter, is that it's, uh, it can be a really great help. It can um, help you improve your decisions. It really can help avoid a lot of uh, hard and painful discussions. I'm coming to that uh, about my personal experience. So altogether, uh, optimize how you work and make your life easier. That's our take. Uh, but we also think that to really make that happen, to um, implement it well, you also have to work on your culture and, and, and prepare the whole organization. Um, I remember back, um, back the days, it was quite some time ago, when I was a student at the University of Innsbruck. And I was uh, engaged at the student representation, the Österreichische Hochschulschaft, I was the chairman there. And there was the academic senate, which is the highest body of the university. And there we decided upon uh, all kinds of things, uh, one-third professor, one-third assistants, and one-third students. And we decided upon big building projects, about strategy, about new studies. Uh, but also some things like corporate uh, design were decided there and discussed. And I remember back uh, that the pre president of the board um, introduced a new corporate design. And, and before, we had a blue pencil, a blue university pencil. And he introduced a new one, and it was red. And I guess the president thought that this point of the agenda would take about two minutes to decide. But guess what? Um, it took one and a half hour to discuss. And why is that? Because everybody has an opinion about color. So what happened is that the, the, the dean of uh, the medicine uh, uh, part said, well, why not blue? We had blue before. Everybody likes blue. I do certainly like blue. And then the, the dean from the nature science came and, you know, right now the our topic is sustainability, ecology. Why, why not green? Why not show that we are really few? So you can, you can guess how it went on and on. And thinking back to that situation, I thought, why didn't we have any kind of data asking the people who are the customers what kind of color they like, what kind of color they prefer, and probably we would have found out that they didn't care really what kind of color. But that also would have been a very important uh, uh, information and data to make a better decision. But even if you start to collect data, um, and this is an experience I had a short time ago. I've been the managing director of an online medium, a new one, that has been introduced into the Austrian market uh, last year from a Swiss publishing house. And the idea was to establish paid content quality content, a difficult uh, uh, market to gain. And uh, we started with uh, four people, we grew quickly to 25 people, and we were all very fond of collecting data because we knew as an online medium, uh, we depend very much on that. So what we did, we did we do, every department, the journalist, marketing, sales, we started to collect data, and really a lot. So we did advertising with Google AdWords, with Facebook and with Twitter, uh, first, we did that with an external agency, then by our own, so different data sets. We communicated via Outlook, but then somebody introduced Slack. Some of you might know that. 
we uh, sent emails with our CRM system Intercom, which was connected with Fastbill, where we, they paid. But it couldn't really um, you know, do newsletters very well, so we implemented MailChimp. So all the conversion rates of newsletters or the opening rates were in different places. We had Hootsuite, which is an overview of all the social media channels. We can also uh, see um, the attention that goes to us. We had WordPress as a basic uh, uh, technology for the CMS system. We had Tableau for visualizing it. We measured uh, actually uh, all the traffic with Mixpanel and Omniture with two different, because Mixpanel again was connected with Intercom. So we even made use of Sapier, which is a software that connects uh, software that can't otherwise be connected. So you get the point, you know, we had a whole bunch of systems and I'm talking about a new organization with 25 people. So, okay, it's a good point to start collecting uh, uh, data. And we certainly didn't lack the tools because there are millions of them and, and, and I tell you I know most of them in the meantime uh, with all the selection uh, we took but even if you have uh, big data or data uh, at your at your fingertips that doesn't mean that it pro improves your uh, decisions so just to tell you about one of the biggest failures of big data also although fictional I have to I have to admit uh, probably some of you know the book and the movie Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and there they had a supercomputer called Deep Thought and this supercomputer actually calculated for 7.5 million years to find the answer uh, to, as far as I remember, the answer uh, to the ultimate question to life, the universe and everything. And the answer was 42. Bad thing was uh, they didn't know what the question was. So they started to calculate again. So you see, you can collect a lot of data, you can process it, but the answer may not be very satisfying. So, with all that uh, being said, you start to collect data, um, but you have to be able to interpret it. And going back to, the, to, to my experience as a managing director of that online medium, we had basically a good, a good, a good um, attitude towards data. We collected a lot. But now, in that situation, with a lot of data and different de departments, we could have, at that junction, we could have gone either way. And the one way could be, and that often happens, we can use data against each other. So everybody making his uh, particular point of this apartment with his data he's collecting, or probably not making use of it at all. Or we, we could have gone the other way, and that is preparing the organization uh, uh, to have a common uh, way to look on data, to cooperate with each, with, with each other. And what exactly you should do in your organization before uh, you start interpreting uh, data, big data, is you should have a look at what kind of culture it takes uh, to be able to do that. And that's going to be Richard's part, but before he's going to make a little exercise with you. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. <laughs> yeah, before I continue, uh, a small question. Who is working here uh, in the implement? participating in the implementation of a big data project. Can you raise the hand? So, one, two, three, four. Um, on a, if I ask you now, those um, who raised the hand, um, so on a scale from one to 10, if I would ask you how, how strong you use the potential, so how much you make really use out of it, where do you stand? One is quite at the beginning, we do not really use it. Or ten is, we are really close to perfect. What, what would be your, um, your ratings? Three? Other ones? Five? Um, five? Okay. Um, so, thank you for, for your inputs. Um, and I have now a second question. Um, if you just have a Quick look on the project, yeah, just with your gut feeling. To go from three to four or from five to six, what would you need? What would your organization need? Just if you just ask by now. Yeah? Um, 
you would need more data from different sources. Okay? May I ask you? The same. So more data. Okay? More know-how on the people side, so on the user side. Okay? It's very interesting. Um, so thank you a lot uh, for bringing in your experience. Um, yeah, what was um, the experience uh, we've met? Um, the organization came to the to a, to a to a certain class limit, you know. So data was available, perhaps more than enough. We don't know, um, but um, the effects, growth, efficiency, was not re was not really in that level. Um, that the people were satisf satisfied. And so a picture developed um, that big data are like seeds, you know? And seeds need soil to grow. So they need a certain environment. And the more data you have, the more seeds you have, um, the more soil, or at least um, uh, the, the stronger the soil needs to be. And um, once we developed this picture, um, we had a look on the organization, on the people who were not um, uh, technicians, who were not uh, data engineers, who were marketing experts, sales experts, um, uh, some data experts, um, media experts. So they were experts in their fields. Um, they had their legacy knowledge. And like Marcus explained, and all the new knowledge um, and usage of, uh, of different data sources. Um, what we found out and what we saw is um, this was a company focused on, on sales and on profit. And the more data they had, um, the more they tried out in their single box, in marketing, in sales, in production, on their production shop level, um, to make something out of it but in their boxes, because it was so complicated and it was so much data. So they, do, they, they tried to learn out of it and take the most out of it. So, um, which was understandable. Huh? It was part of a bigger company. They wanted their bi-weekly forecasts. They wanted their bi-weekly reports. They wanted that people meet their targets. So they had a very, very strong, um, objectives to fulfill. And so what, what are you doing if you have strong objectives to fulfill? You dig and dig and dig in the field um, you're familiar with. Uh, the thing is, you're familiar with the data you know. You're not familiar with the big data which are other people using, you might not know. And so what we learned is that we need to invest in something which is more, which gives more room for um, sharing information of questions that people from different departments know what other people do. So finally, we called it, ah, we have to invest in more transparency. Um, which was, by the way, not easy, because um, here you're the owner of your box, you're the owner of your job, you're the owner of your data. Um, here it's unclear who is the owner of the data, who is responsible for it, um, who might use it. So these were the, the biggest obstacles. Um, secondly, um, this was an old school structure, different departments. We took the picture of silos because it's the, um, it's the best image um, uh, to show what it makes. Um, it's, an, it's a body it, itself and um, people in their perspective, in their thinking, remain in this body. And what we learned is that we need to do activities uh, which bring the people together from point to point um, that um, they understand what kind of other data might be interesting for their own job, which might be uh, interesting to understand why people, why customers um, stay, so customer retention, why customers are leaving, what are the reasons, and um, Normally, marketing is knowing that, but sales does not, because they have their sales figures. And um, 
at the very beginning, it was not the culture in this company to share this because this was very sensitive uh, data. So data remained in the silos. And um, so we needed a strong input and um, open room that people started to trust and to share um, this information. And, um, and collaboration finally means taking um, responsibility for the other silo as well. So um, from a strongly separated structure um, to a sense of collaboration, I do feel responsibility um, as well for the rest because we are co-linked. And thirdly, um, of course, part of a bigger company, um, hierarchy, uh, CEO levels, um, and um, the issue of hierarchies, if this level cannot decide, you delegate it on the next level to decide. The issue on this hierarchy question in big data is that this level does not have the information and the data um, to decide, to take the decision. So it's not a question of um, chaotic organization that everybody decides what he wants, but the question is how can we do the decision on that point, on that location, thank you, um, where it can be decided. And at best at the lowest level on the short, on, on the lowest level because they are so close to data and um, so fast in uh, realizing uh, what was decided. But that means if I, if I change the decision making process, I uh, completely change um, the idea of uh, participation of um, co-deciding um, because then I'm really co-responsible for what we are doing here and of course I have my own part but I'm as well responsible for the bigger part and this was most of the the most tricky thing um, to to get people to learn that uh, we do not talk anything of energy of um, no structures anymore everybody is doing what he wants but it's really a question um, of um, a common decision um, about decision making, who can decide, who can decide what? Yeah. So um, we had these three topics made um, as uh, cultural items: transparency, collaboration, and uh, participation. Um, and um, tried to, yeah, to change on the structural side um, how where people were working together, how people were working together. Um, for example, we uh, decided that um, agendas and uh, protocols of meetings were widely spread so everybody could have a look into it, um, what was discussed in a meeting, which was new. Usually, um, this, was, um, this information was kept. So these are small examples, just to give you a slight idea of what it meant to, to increase the spirit of using the big data available um, not only in the silos, but in the whole organization. Yeah, just um, uh, to, to come to an end, uh, finally, we used a, a process of seven steps, which we called the, the living strategy, lebendige strategie, because it, was, um, it really depends on the people involved. And one of the first thing, I think this is the most important thing, was um, that the people in this organization became a common sense, a common picture of what are their strengths in the organization. Because if the, a group of people have a basic understanding of their strengths, then they start to trust each other. And this is needed to, to really live transparency, because if not, transparency is highly often understood as control. Um, that they leave participation, that they decide with each other, because if not, everybody is waiting that the other one is deciding and taking responsibility, and then collaboration is possible. Um, that means um, I think much more what is the effect of my doing of the other people in this company. Yeah, thank you for um, 
Thank you, Philip, as well, for the time management. And um, have a nice evening.